Carmen Charmaine here and welcome to another video. Today I will be answering your frequently asked questions about paper making. So around a couple of days ago I did a poll on Instagram and on YouTube and I asked about any questions that you have for paper making because I was making this video and I would like to address all of the questions that I get in the comments. I have a bunch of handmade paper making videos if you haven't seen those yet do check them out and i get a bunch of comments about asking about a whole lot of things and i thought i just consolidate everything and hopefully this video will be able to address if not all but most of the questions that i get in the comments i got questions about what i do with the excess pulp i also got questions about the sizing that i use and I had loads of questions about the kuching sheet, the type of fabric that I use as well, and what I use to add colors, and you know, general paper making properties like how do you make smooth or soft paper. And I will try to answer most of your questions in this video. But if I do miss a question, I'm sorry about that but you can just drop them in the comments below and hopefully in a follow-up video, I'll be able to address those questions as well. Do enter this video knowing that I am not a professional paper artist in any way. I've only started learning paper making like 2020 when the pandemic started and I have been continually sharing my process and sharing my experiments and I am still in the process of learning more. So some of the things that I will say right now may be different in the near future, but hopefully you will still find this video helpful. So let's begin and we're going to answer the questions that I got from the polls. I've actually put them in different categories, so we will go through the whole FAQ video smoother. So let's begin with this one. So how much does it cost to start up with a hobby? What's a good way to start making your paper without having to spend money on tools? So I actually have videos for these. So I have a no mold and deco video right here. So all you need is a piece of cloth and a tray or even a plate at home. So you can actually start making the paper with out spending on anything so you can check that out i'll put it in the description below and i also have a no blender video right here at the bottom where you can use a mortar and pestle to grind up the pulp so you can use embroidery hoops like these ones as well to make a mold and deco a makeshift mold and deco for a lower cost i have a video on that as well right here link below as well so this one is super cheap this one is like about 25 30 pesos for one embroidery hoop and yeah that's one thing that you can try i also have seen other people using frames makeshift frames where they just get an old frame and staple on a wire mesh onto the frame and get another frame and you know you get the whole concept if you just use the makeshift ones you will have to replace them ever so often otherwise if you're wanting to make a business out of it or just really make a whole bunch like you can that's the time where i can suggest that you start investing on a good quality set these mold and decals that i have on so she gathers I've reinforced them on the sides so they have a longer life than your regular mold and deco and you can keep making paper. But if you're just wanting to try the whole craft and you don't want to spend on anything as, you're, as you have asked in the questions, you can check out the videos that I have referred earlier. Next, okay, what to do when you do not have a blender? I answered that earlier, link below. Do you need a separate blender? To only use for paper making the most advisable is yes especially when you're recycling paper because different types of paper have different types of ink and different types of chemicals that you are not aware of or that we are not made aware of so to be on the safe side yes you will most definitely need to use a separate blender for paper making but if you don't want to spend on a separate blender you can grind it up using a mortar and pestle as well 
Next is, can I dry the paper on any type of material? So this brings us to the coaching sheet part. So I'll read the related questions as well. I feel like normal cloth makes my paper too textured. What material do you use? And what type of cloth are you using? So we're going into the fabric of the coaching sheet, which is this particular fabric that you see right here. So the story behind this fabric is I don't really know what the name of this fabric is because I purchased this in the clearance bin at the shopping mall. So it had a bunch of stains on it and i think i got it for like 13 pesos per meter which was super cheap compared to all the other fabrics there and it just so happens to have that rigid body that i was looking for and it had a super fine grain so to answer your question i feel like normal cloth would make my paper too textured what material do you use so your base material for your coaching sheet will most likely be the texture of your final paper. You have to keep that in mind when choosing the fabric for coaching sheet. I have also tried canvas paper in some of my earlier videos and also the bamboo reusable towels, but I've forgone all those because, for example, this is one of the earlier fabrics that I use. As you can see, it's very flimsy. And when I dry the paper right here, and the pulp when it dries tends to curl up so this sheet actually curls with it because it's very soft and flimsy so i've found that the flimsy type of fabric doesn't really work well because i hang dry my papers and i also use the bamboo towel that was sort of like a felt if like a felt it had like a felt um texture to it it was okay for the first couple of times that i used it but over time the felt surface was fraying and it made my papers become more textured which that wasn't what i was going for oh also also in one of my videos i used a t-shirt if you want to check out how i used a normal shirt as a coaching sheet the coaching sheet that actually works so I will put the video to this tutorial right here. That's so that would be a very good idea if you you're just trying out paper making for the first time and you don't really want to spend on purchasing cloth or fabric. Next is what do you use to color the paper or do you use a retention agent for your colors? So the answer is no, I don't use the retention agent for my colors. So far the method of coloring that i use has been good so as you can see this these are the papers that i did more than a year ago and they have retained their color very well because i think because i use colored sheets or colored paper to color in the pulp so why do i use colored paper because i tried dye before but then they stain a lot of my things. It really gives leaves off that nasty stain on my coaching sheet. It also leaves a stain on my bin, the plastic bin that I use for paper making. So I wasn't a big fan of that and paint does that as well. And I found that using colored sheets, I get a very minimal staining. So people were like in somewhere in the comments in some of the videos, in one of the videos, I think, they were like, why are you using paper to color it? It's like, it doesn't make sense. But to me personally, it does. It is actually more cost efficient because if I buy paints or dyes, they would turn out to be more expensive. For example, I use this colored notepad and it has like blocks of colors to it. It's just a few left right now, but it, this one is just like 25 pesos and I got like 70 sheets and to make a batch I only need two or three of these sheets to color in an entire litter of pulp so it's actually more cost efficient and the colors are more balanced and maybe I think because the original dye is really meant for coloring pulps I think it makes sense it's just the exact same thing if I purchase like a bottle of dye or a bottle of paint to color my pulp. I'm just purchasing it in paper form. Plus, I also have a bunch of these paper offcuts that have color on them. So these 
are gifted. I have a bunch of like a big box with a bunch of paper scraps on them. So these were gifted by an invitation maker here in the city where I live in and you know you're also recycling. It's an, also an opportunity to recycle more paper. So it is my personal preference. Other paper makers use dyes and stuff but I personally prefer and I think it's more practical and sustainable for me to use paper to color in my paper. What flowers do you put in the paper that won't bleed? So, I have included in my handmade paper kits, I always include dried hydrangeas for two reasons. They don't bleed, well at least these ones that I purchased from Design Theory Collective. The hydrangeas don't bleed at all. Plus, plus, they really are so delicate that you won't have issues of them falling off of the handmade paper that you're making. So they hold really well on the pulp. So if you're new to paper making, hydrangeas, like these ones, the pre-dried hydrangeas, they make as really good floral embellishments to begin with and they won't stain your paper. So here's an example of one of the papers. As you can see, it's really embedded on onto the pulp. It really holds on really well. Whereas if you compare it to the other papers that I have, you know, you can see them pop out and you can see that they actually sort of emboss, deboss it and they, they fall off because they're a bit thick. So as for which particular flowers won't bleed, it really depends so it's a matter of taking notes of what type of flowers that you originally use and which ones that bleed and just in my experience i think the ones that are yellow or or like green when you start with them they're the ones that bleed the most but i could be wrong it could be different depending on the flowers that you're using but yes i can just give you a recommendation hydrangeas just have been really good in terms of avoiding the bleeding and stuff next we have a bunch of questions about housekeeping how do you clean up when you're finished what do you do with the leftover water in the pulp with the pulp and what do you do with the leftover bits of pulp of paper pulp in the vat i turn the leftover pulp into these blocks as you can see right here Ta-da! So what I do is I just pour the leftover pulp onto my deco, the back portion. And I just put it there, like the pulp there, and then I take it outside and leave it to dry. And they turn into these little blocks. And if I wanted to use them again, I just soak the blocks in water and they'll soften up again. And I can run them again in the blender if I want them to be fine again. So that's what I do with my leftover pulp. I don't throw them away. I keep them so I can use them some other time. Next, what types of paper can I use, not use? For example, can I use flyers, junk mail, store ads, wrapping paper, etc.? Can I mix different types of paper, example, matte paper, print paper, glossy paper, etc.? So I'll answer the second question first. Yes, you can use different types of paper. I personally do that. But in my experience, for example, you have glossy, you begin with glossy paper, it doesn't turn glossy afterwards. Your final paper will not be glossy. That's in my experience. And can I, you can use any type of paper, I think. So generally, you can use any type of paper. So anything that was pulp before, you can turn it into pulp again. So obviously, plastic, the plastic lining isn't a part of the pulp. So you can reuse paper with plastic lining on them. The important thing to note is that whatever the contents of your original paper is, it will show up in your final paper. For example, you're using a magazine. You won't get that same color because the magazine has ink on it and it'll spread out. So you'll probably have a gray type of paper when the, mix, when the inks mix in the final pulp. So did you use any types of additives or sizing? What do you do to make handmade paper more resistant? I don't understand what sizing is. So to answer it, my papers, the one that I put up on Sochi Gathers and the ones that I've made in the past year, so this is like my 
little log book of all the papers, a swatch book of all the papers that I made in the past year. So I did not use any type of sizing here because one of the, I don't remember which particular research paper that I read, but if your paper already has sizing, like your original pulp has sizing on it, you don't need to add more sizing. So I don't really use sizing for paper making yet because like you know regular copy paper they can take ball pens you can print on them you can print on this one as well you can print on them you can use a ballpoint pen and a gel pen on regular paper since i use regular paper this recycled paper has the qualities of regular paper basically sizing is an additive that you put onto the pulp so that it'll become more resistant to oils and stuff so it won't be so absorbent so I can't really explain that right now and I can't give you like details about it because I myself have just recently been studying this particular type of sizing it's called CMC and I've been experimenting with it so I don't have the measurements just yet but just to show you the difference I have a swatch right here so I can't share the details just yet because I've been getting very inconsistent results with the sizing. But this one right here, you can see the difference, I hope. So this upper half does not have external sizing. So as you can see, there is so much bleeding on the fountain pen. But after the application of the sizing at the bottom half, it performed a whole lot better so there is no bleeding on the fountain pen and it held the watercolor well so this is another comparison so when i get the consistent results in terms of the measurements and how to apply the sizing i will be putting it up as another video so if you don't want to miss that one this is your sign to click subscribe so you get updates when my sizing video will come to fruition in the future. How to remove air bubbles. Almost all of my papers have tiny air bubbles. So when the paper is dry, it's not as smooth as I like. So yes, I do have papers with air bubbles. I have minimal air bubbles on this one, like this one and this one right here. I think it will be I think you can address the air bubbles in the pressing process. Like just make sure that you've squeezed out as much of the water off of the pulp before drying it because the air bubbles are caused by the water in the pulp. So I think these ones are caused by that. So maybe you can try just making sure that you've pressed out as much excess water on the pulp before drying it. On the pulp when it's already on the coaching sheet, I mean. How to make my paper be like what be watercolor paper? Like how can they absorb the color so easily? So I think sizing, sizing will help with that as you can see right here in my sample. The difference with the sizing, it doesn't bleed at all. It doesn't absorb the, it doesn't absorb the colors. And without sizing, it just bleeds and spreads out. So you will need to learn about sizing. Something that I'm not familiar yet with, but I will share it with you in the future. How do you ensure the paper is even when you dip into the mixture? It sifts out, it's hard to make, and it's not lopsided. Thank you. How do you make a thinner, softer paper that's not too delicate? So I will just refer you to a video that I already have, how to make soft handmade paper. I give seven tips to achieve a even surface and creating a soft type of paper right there. So you can check that out. Then I think that's it. Yay, we answered all of the questions. And if you feel like watching more paper craft videos and paper making videos, I have a whole bunch here on my channel do check that out anyway guys if you have any other questions just drop them in the comments below and i will most probably answer them in a follow-up video in the future
Thank you so much for making it through till the end of this video and I hope you found this FAQ paper making video helpful in your own paper making journey. So do check out my shop so she gathers for your own handy paper kits and also follow me on Instagram. I also have TikTok and that's it. I will see you in the next one. Bye!